had written some books. I said, maybe they'll let me interview them. And I asked a couple of people on uh, to be guests, and they said, sure. And that was really cool. And then I asked one of the people if they had recommend someone for the show, and they said, well, Willie Tyler and Lester, would, would I think they'd be good for your show. I don't know if anybody on this show remembers Willie Tyler and Lester, but he's one of the first Ventru- Ventru- Twillic Chris, <laughs> right out. No, Twillic, whatever. <laughs> He, he, he plays with a puppet uh, before <laughs> Jeff Dunham did. And uh, they did the show. And then when I had, like, these all-stars, then I started approaching people that I hadn't spoken to in 35 years. I said, hey, you, you want to do a show? You, you know, get, give you a chance to talk about your career and your lives? And they said, sure. And basically only one person has said no. And uh, everybody else has said yes. I've done about 40 shows now. And you can find them at 80s, like you see down below, 80s golden age of comedy.com. And what's phenomenal about the show, just to give you a for instance, when I knew these comics back in the 80s, and we could talk more about that in a little bit. When I knew them in the 80s, it was all, hey, I got this job for you, and have you been on Carson, and have you done this one and that show, and where are you going next week? It was never about personal stories. And if it was personal, it was how great they're feeling about how good they're doing. So on this show, I get people to talk about their, not just their the success in their careers, but how did they get there? How did they get going? What was their family life like? Did their family help them or hinder them? Because you'd be surprised how many people that are super driven came from very dysfunctional households. And they had to, they worked twice as hard to to get away from their families and prove to them that they're funny, they're a winner, they're talented, they're creative. So whether they were in good households who supported them or whether they were grew up in bad households, uh, I got some great, great stories and it was amazing to learn about the comedians, their personal lives. Yeah, cause like, like, like you said, you all you did when you spoke to them 35 years ago was, hey, have you done this show or have you done that show? You never really got, you never got the opportunity to be intimate and got and, and get the opportunity to sit down and really get to know this person, who, who what they're experiencing, what they've do, what they're doing. So that's why I love doing what I'm doing here, cause it gives me an opportunity to speak to different people that I might have never spoken to before. I might have never gotten to know, so it allows me the opportunity to to get to know a whole a whole different world out there. I've done celebrities, I've done regular people, I've done just about every everything in between, and and I, I love it. Is some of my best episodes are just some of the regular people who have a story to share, and that's what I love. Yeah, I've got a pretty interesting one. Uh, it it starts for me back around 1980. I was a uh, Living in Boston, Boston's a great place to live when you're young and either a student or a young person, because Boston has 124 colleges and universities. And imagine what goes on there every September when there's new freshmen coming into a town like that, a party <laughs> town. Well, that's, that's something we have in common because I, I went to school, I went to college right outside of uh, Boston in Newton, Mass. Uh, so oh, I know what cool. you're talking about. I play golf there. <laughs> I lived in Watertown. My friends were from Newton. Uh, great place. Great place. And uh, so, you know, Boston, it's a great party town. But after I was there about 10 years and I started an import export jewelry business and it kind of brought me to do shows and be in show business. But I traveled from New York to L.A. to Chicago to Atlanta and, and set up booths at big trade shows. And I was, it's funny to think of it that I was in show business then, because if I didn't put on some kind of show or didn't connect with people, I wouldn't have sold too much when I did those shows. But there came a time when I was like getting bored and what am I going to do? Because I was playing golf at Putterham in Brookline, golf course right near where you grew up there. And, uh, and a couple of guys came, uh, there was a writer's strike out in LA in 80. And a couple of guys came back when there was no work to do. They came back to party in Boston. And I didn't know them, but they knew my friends who I partied. So a bunch of us partied and had a great time together for a week or so. I don't remember how long it was. But 
as we're getting closer to the end, they said, well, what are you doing here? I said, you know, I don't really know. I said, why don't you come out to L.A.? I said, wow. They said, they're very active. He was the producer of Love Boat, and he was directing shows. And they said, we'll hook you up. I mean, I don't know what we can do, but if you come out there, we'll do whatever we can. And I said, wow, thanks. And a couple of, like, months later, I was watching TV in my living room, and a 60-minute show came on, and they were showcasing – this personal manager, not an agent, a personal manager is someone who manages careers. An agent is someone who gets them jobs. So